family. This is how we are starting off our day with Miss Layla. Layla, say hey to the family. Hi. Y'all. Yeah, this is how we're starting off our day. Um, bring y'all along with us. This is part of our life. So welcome to it. Any sort of little No. No. Oh, this is new. How you doing? I'm doing. You just put your hand right in between. You're all set. Thank you. And you're gonna oh, go wow. to the purple dot with your ID ready, okay? Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, you like coming here? <laughs> you like it here? I love it here. I'm just going to go right over there and get checked in at the green light. Okay, thank you. Yeah, she keeps trying to hide from the camera. <laughs> this is a day in our life, guys. Yeah, she just started it. Okay. Really? Yeah, the Take insurance. A while, didn't it? Yeah, the insurance. Okay. So how many shots have you had? Just one? Mm -hmm. okay. She takes the second one tomorrow. All right. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll, we'll be better after okay. she's on it longer because that medicine takes about three months to oh, fully, wow. fully work. Okay. Some people get results for shot, but it's more common that it takes gradually over time. It gets better. Okay. Do you, have you noticed any difference yet? Mm -hmm. You have. Okay, good. It's a little less. It a little less pain. Good. Perfect. Okay, that's what I want here. All right, good. So the goal is over time, it will gradually improve. Okay. With more and more shots. Any problems with the shot? She just said it hurts. So did we take it out and leave it at room temperature? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> it doesn't hurt that much. No, it hurt, <laughs> it hurt after she took it out. It hurt after. Mm -hmm. And the medicine stings a bit, but believe me, it's better than before. And it used to sting a lot. Now it just stings a little bit. Okay. So it's pretty pretty well tolerated by most kids. So. <clears throat> I know they told us to like, uh, the lady on the phone, when she explained it to me, she was like, uh, put like a, a cold uh, compress, uh, like an ice pack yes. on it before and you know she needs it afterwards to kind of numb it a little bit so we did that okay good <clears throat> good yeah i can't i mean we can there's little tricks we can do to make it easier but unfortunately i can't get rid of every little bit of the mm -hmm. thing it's still a needle and it's still medicine yeah. unfortunately. but it's most of the time i mean twice a month isn't bad which is different <laughs> yeah very different this time 
All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. Are you doing meloxicam? <clears throat> yes. You still doing it? Okay. Once you start feeling better, and if you want to move the meloxicam to as needed, okay. I'm okay with that, but let's wait until she's feeling better. Okay. I would say after about two months of shots. Yeah. So you got about three more. Yeah. And then you can maybe, if you're feeling better, if you're not feeling better and you want to keep it on for a while, that's okay. Okay. But if you're feeling better and you're not having that pain and stiffness, you can just take the meloxicam as needed. Okay. Hey y'all, so um, we are back from the doctor's office. We had a lot of running around to do um, after the appointment, but we did go, we did get the appointment, got everything done as far as that. Um, so now we are back home where Layla's off with her grandma. Um, but I'm back home and like I stated, um, I am currently um dealing with or going through you know the situation with my daughter um having jia jia if you do not know is juvenile idiopathic arthritis and that is a form of childhood arthritis um she was diagnosed in 2018 with it um she was complaining a lot of times um 
about the pain. She would always say that her legs hurt. Her knees hurt. She was always complaining about being in pain. Like when she wakes up in the morning for school and she will, you know, um, go all slow and getting dressed and try and stay home and say she in pain. So I was thinking that she just trying to stay home from school. So I was like, no girl, you finna get dressed. You finna get yourself together and you getting up out this dough to go to school. You know what I'm saying? So for a long time, I was just like so hard on her. Now I feel bad about it. Now that I know, you know, what was going on. At first, I did not know. I didn't know anything about JIA. I didn't know, you know, this was something she was dealing with. I didn't know anything. I just thought that she was just saying she was in pain to stay home from school. Um, so we kind of like it was off and on pain. Um, it would come and it would go. Um, and then one day my mom just noticed. She was like looking at her and she said, "Um, you ain't never looked at her leg." And I was like no why she was like did you see her knee it was the right knee i believe um she was like her knee is bigger than the other and it was like pink it was like red and pink like it was really big and round like her her kneecap was really round and um and i was like well she didn't complain of it you know when she was but when the time we started swelling she had a complaint of um excuse me of any pain or nothing like that and Layla used to dance. Um, she was in a dancing with Royce. Um, or whatever. So I was like, um, you know, she was dancing and stuff like that. She never complained about her knee hurting. She never said she got hurt or anything like that. So why is it so swollen? And y'all, when I said we went to hospital after hospital, doctor after doctor, like, I'm just trying to find answers for my baby. And I was just so, I was scared because I'm like, what is this? Like, how did this happen? I'm thinking that it could have been an allergic reaction. I didn't know what to think. What, you know, so much was going on through my mind or whatever. And um, we went to the hospital. Of course, they did x-rays um, and all kind of scans and stuff like that. And it will always come back as, you know, oh, she didn't have any broken bones or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to give her a, a knee immobilizer. And a knee immobilizer was just like a cast, but not like structure like a cast. But it's to keep her, they would give it to her to keep her knee um, immobilized so that she cannot move it or whatever. So every time we went to the hospital, and I'm talking about we went to hospital after hospital after hospital, and that would be the solution. It would be either be crutches, they would give her, or the knee immobilizer. So... Um, she would have this and she would put it on and, um, you know, it would be kind of hard for her to walk. Um, she would complain about it being painful, um, because she got to keep her legs stiff and she would have to keep it on like for a majority of part of the day and she would just take it off. Um, I believe it was when she was sleeping, she would take it off and just prop her leg up. So that was, um, that was stressful. You know, because she always complained that she can't do stuff. She can't, you know, walk like she wants or run like she wants. So, that was kind of, you know, getting her down. Um, so, it was, that, and with the JIA, it was flare-ups. Like, what juvenile arthritis is, it's a autoimmune disease. Um, so, it's like the body attacking itself. I didn't notice at first. I just thought, you know, her knee was swollen. And, and you know, we found out what everything was and the meaning of it and all of that. Once um, she got to the specialist that she's seeing now after visiting a thousand doctors. Um, so yeah, it's an autoimmune disease. So her body is attacking itself. So um, so it would come and go. She would have flare ups and it would come and it would go get swollen and then it would go away. She would have pain and she would have no pain. So um, I was like, you know, I went out to my local hospitals and her pediatrician, like nobody could give me answers as to why my child's knee was swollen. And they just kept asking me, well, did she get hurt? Did she fall? Like, did she injure it in any kind of way? Like, what, what is going on? You got to give us something to work off of. And I'm like, y'all just, shit, I'm just as cool as y'all. Like, I don't know. She just woke up one day and this is how it was. So, um, the, I think that, yeah, her pediatrician gave me a referral to a specialist to go and get another um, knee immobilizer. Um, then we went and we had to get another referral to go to somebody else to go. They were sending her to 
like a bone doctor or something like that. It was like, it was something weird. It ain't nothing like what she go to now. Um, at the time, and I was like, it really don't got nothing to do with what we're going for, which is why she don't go to that doctor anymore because they said the same thing. Like, there's nothing we can do for her. We don't deal with this once we find out what it was. So, um, but that doctor, they did the, the cat, the scans. I think it was a cat scan. They did the scans, the x-rays and everything on her there. Fitted her for another knee immobilizer. They were saying the one we was using before was not the correct size. So they sized her um, because that's what they specialize in. Um, it's like casts, canes, walkers, all of that. So they fitted her for um, a knee immobilizer for her age, her height, her weight, her just her size, period. So um, they um, did that. She got that. Um then it was nothing else they could do like they said they didn't specialize in that type of stuff they didn't know you know why the doctor even had us go to her so at this point i'm just frustrated i'm like somebody gotta tell me something like my baby asking me stuff and i don't even know know what to tell her so um i ended up taking her i got frustrated went to the hospital and cause she had a flare up went to the hospital we got no answers so i'm like okay like i i just don't know what to do so i talked to my mom and she was like Maybe you need to try a different hospital. Try something else. Try, you know, you can't always go with the first person, you know, stop settling, stop just letting them keep sending you home or sending her home because clearly it's something going on. Clearly something is wrong. So I was like, you know what, you're right. Like, we're not taking no for answer no more. Somebody got to tell us something. Like, I'm not leaving, baby. Y'all got to call all kinds of security to get me up out of here because, like, I need to know what, what the hell wrong with my child. So, um... We end up going to the hospital she at now. Like it's, they have different uh, specialists and stuff inside of the hospital. It's a children's hospital, hospital that specializes. Well, I found that hospital. Let me back up. I found that hospital because my son was going to that hospital. Not that exact one. He went to that one for a surgery. He um had was like kind of losing hearing and his left ear. So like he kept failing hearing tests and hearing tests and hearing tests. So um. They referred us to ideologists um, that he was seeing that was at this hospital and they performed his surgery um, for his ears. So that's how I found this hospital. I was like, you know, they was really, really good. They was able to tell me they was hands on. You know, they was real informative with the information they was giving me. Like they let me know everything that was going on with my son, like from beginning to end. So I was like, you know what, mom? I'm going to take her. I'm gonna that's what I'm going to take her. That's what I'm going to take her. They're real good, and I feel like I'm going to get results there. Um, that place is far. It's like 45 minutes, almost an hour away from where we go at or where we live. But I was like, hey, that's what we got to do to get to the bottom of this. That's what we're going to do. So, um, at the time, I had no car, so I'm catching rides and um, stuff like that. Uber, Lyft, from people taking me and my friend, my mama, everybody, my son, daddy. So, we just, you know gotta keep going back and forth out there to the doctor like i said it's like 45 minutes to an hour away so we go out there she see the specialist there and like like i said with my son like hands on completely like from beginning to end they broke everything down to me like i said they told me where jia is um they explained to me that it was not nothing that i did you know as far as carrying her um that it's not hereditary because her dad did when I first told him what was going on he was like oh that happened to me when I was a kid the same me everything so I was like okay so how we go about this like what's gonna happen he was like oh they're gonna just put a needle in her they're gonna drain it out and she's gonna be fine and he was like it's okay I had it so we told the doctor that and it was like oh okay where the dad you know had fluid on his knee because that's what they ended up finding out what was wrong with her that she had fluid on the knee um on her left knee she had fluid on the right knee she had fluid on her knee and i was like okay so what what you know what do we do from there so they was like we're gonna go and schedule her appointment for surgery so she had surgery she got diagnosed in 2018 um with this doctor told us what it was um 2019 christmas eve she go had to go i had to take her to this this hospital um early in the morning christmas eve and they did surgery um on her so that was her first surgery and i was like panicking i'm like okay i went through the surgery with my son like this is something totally different um it didn't take long or anything like that it was just being that you know something when something going on something happened to your child of course you're gonna get worried so i was just you know i was scared i was nervous she was calm she was chill um she took it like a champ 
um they went in like her dad said they went in through like uh like ultrasound kind of um and with a needle and drained the fluid out of her knee but when they got inside they figured they figured out that she had fluid in both knees so but she was on only one was swollen so she had to go and get um uh, the needles put in both knees and the fluid drained out. Um, they said it was like a teaspoon um, on one knee and one, one had more than the other one of fluid. So they drained it out and then they ended up giving her cortisone um, injections and inside the, the joints. Between the joints so that, you know, it would like they wouldn't hit each other or anything like that. Like the bones won't rub, rub up against each other and won't cause no friction and no kind of pain. So they, they gave her the cortisone in both knees um and she was fine for a while so with this doctor we go like every two or three months to go and see the specialist um last appointment she had to have um uh, another x-ray blood work she was complaining that her hands were hurting so um like if y'all seen in the clip that she said that she does have swelling in her hands um we found at the last visit that the uh her she's having um I forgot what's the name of it deterioration i'm sorry she having deterioration in her hands um so that's causing her some pain um like the medicine she got to take she's not a pill swallower but they do they did give me pills for her to take for the pain um then she has to take medicine for the actual injections because she does have to have injections first she had to have injections every week uh, once a week, I would have to give her injections, and yeah, y'all, I was so scared. Like I'm like, oh my god, I gotta give my baby some shots. This something she gotta be like, like I just said no. I was like, girl, like this is too much. And oh, excuse me, I went to medical school. I went to school, like I said, when I was pregnant with her, I went to school for medical assistant for the whole nine months. So I was like, girl, I don't know if this was in God's plans. That's what I'm supposed to do, baby, because no, I'm not working anymore as a medical assistant. But now I got to put all my skills that I done learned and went to school for to use because I guess God knew I was going to need it. He knew, you know, that this was going to be something I was going to be dealing with. So I have to give her um, uh, weekly injections and I have to rotate her arms. This was... Um, in the beginning when we first found out what was going on with her she had the weekly injections she would have the um pill for pain she would have to have the pill take a pill for the injections because it's like the, the injections will make her sick um so she had to take a, a medicine to make her feel better so she had to take that first um to kind of counteract the injection um and this is what it like it came like this and like it's like yellow that's the name of it. Sorry. Yeah. Methotrexate. So this was what it was. And it's come like in a vial like this. And I would have to go and um, get the needles and everything separate. Put it together. You know, drain the, the medicine into here. And inject her with it every week, like I said. Um, so she was getting four injections a week. I mean, a month. Um... And that was, I thought it was working. Like, she took pretty, pretty fast to it. I was just nervous with it because I read the side effects. And the doctor also told me that with that, that is what they give people with cancer. Um, that's how they treat people with cancer, um, sometimes with that injection. So, she was like, to be, you know, she may lose weight. Um, she may lose her appetite. Um, she may lose her hair. And, like, it had, like, so many different uh side effects and i was just so scared like i just prayed prayed prayed, prayed. my mom was like anything happens so she's gonna be all right so if anything it made her hair grow like her hair grew a lot um she didn't experience she only got sick i think like twice um taking the injections so it wasn't that bad um yeah, so she takes the the injections and that's to treat the inf um inflammation in her joints or whatever so it keeps the swelling down it keeps her from having flare-ups um so that was that uh that stopped working because the last appointment like i said she had started complaining of it in her hands um and pain in her back so the doctor and then she had swelling had came back um she could feel the fluid this time it was in the left leg last appointment so uh she was a little worried about that so she changed the medicine to something more um something stronger more progressive she said and she we're gonna now have to treat 
the arthritis um a little bit more aggressively um so she gave so she has to have like a note for school to give her extra time to walk um between her classes um she has a note and they have to put it on her name badge at school that she can take the elevator she does not take the stairs like a normal kid she has to take the elevator up and down the different floors so she have quite a few accommodations um like pe and stuff like that um they have to give her an extra class to make up for pe um even though now she's saying it's good to do but certain things she don't recommend her like the flip and uh stuff that were like high impact she cannot do um so yeah last last appointment we got different medication and this one she don't like it because say this one hurts this one is i can't show it to you because i put it inside the box already but it comes like like an epi pen kind of thing like it's um it automatically automatic automatically um injects the medication into her so i have to shoot her in her stomach which i don't like like this is the bad part about all of this like just having to do this stuff to your child like um it's just a lot so i have to either shoot her in her stomach with the medicine or shoot her in her thigh um with the medicine and it just came like i said she just started this medicine she gets the next round tomorrow but it came with like all of this stuff to put a sharps container to put the uh, needles in after every injection it came in like a big like styrofoam box that we have to keep in the refrigerator we have to keep it refrigerated before like 15 to 20 minutes before i give her the injection i have to sit the medicine out sit the needle out so that it can be room temperature um before i give it to her um she don't like it at all she said it hurts um, so we have to numb her, put an ice pack on her stomach or wherever we're going to shoot her at to numb it. Um, so this, 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 this is, this is my life, y'all. This is part of my life that I was kind of, you know, skeptical about showing people or telling people about it. I was like, cause it's not my life, it's her life, you know? So I was like, Layla, do you mind if I, you know, share this with people? Um, you know, I don't know if we can maybe help somebody because nobody, you know, this is new to us. It's nothing that, you know, we didn't know. We couldn't look up this stuff. So I was like, well, let me let share your journey, you know, with the people. I'll talk about it if you, if that's okay with you. So she said it was okay. So I'm on here sharing y'all, um, her story and what she goes through. Um, there is no cure, um, for JIA. It said it may progress you know she may carry it over to adulthood and it will be adult um arthritis that she will have to deal with but they're going to treat it and try and get it under control um like i said it's no cure they just have to it'll eventually you know once they get it under control it'll be less like less flare-ups and less inflammation and stuff like that that she will have to go through um you've seen in the video that she can do certain activities um, she was just sad because like she likes to dance and flip and those are things that she cannot do um, Right now, so you know, she's like, oh, I, I can't do normal stuff and which is which hurts as a parent because you're so used to your child You know acting one way and now, you know, to take a hit and you know their whole life change in a matter of, of seconds so That's that and no, we don't get no kind of no money no income like no no benefits or anything like that you know because i get people all the time well she can get you know a, a, a disability for that and all it is so i mean no we don't get any of that um it's just like a hassle trying to go through all of that it's a long process so we don't get it right now um and then also jia affects the eyes so she has to go and get um a regular um what do you want to call it vision vision exam she have to go regularly and get those uh recommended every six months to a year for kids but she got to go regular because it does sometimes travel and affect the eyes so she will have swelling behind her eyes excuse me y'all right, i decided to sit in here in the living room because the status is better in this room the lighting is a little bit better and i can put my ring light up but baby like i told y'all before we live on the main road on the front street so everything is just we hear everything coming and going but um yeah guys so that that is that that's you know this is my firstborn child um 
that I have to deal with this. So yeah, she's living with JIA for right now. We're praying God for um, healing. So I speak healing over her life. And this is not, you know, something we'll have to be dealing with for a long time. So guys, I hope that this um, video was informative, that somebody found it informative. I hope that it helped somebody, it touched somebody. Um, just this, just me opening up, letting y'all into my world. Like I said, not all of my videos are going to be, um, you know, DIYs, pranks, nail vlogs, entrepreneur vlogs. Um, it's just, this It's my channel, it's about me. So this is what I am dealing with. So I decided to bring y'all along, bring y'all along for today's visit to show y'all inside our life. Um, the life of me and Layla and living with JIA, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Okay. So you guys, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. And girl, if you are new, welcome. Okay. I hope that you like it here. I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, hit that like button. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all know, hey boo. Okay. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Share this video. You know, it may be helpful to somebody. And you guys, give Layla... You know, her favorite color is purple. So y'all give Layla purple hearts down in the comments. And I'll show her, you know, y'all hearts and y'all comments. Show us, give her some love. This is not something that's easy for her as a teenager. It's going to be 13. This is very, very hard. Her life has changed tr tremendously. Um, so, you know, she needs all the encouragement that she can get you know on her ups and down stages so like i said comment down below y'all some purple hearts for my baby girl and once again thank you guys see you in the next vlog bye